All right, time now for All Things Gators, All Things Orange and Blue. Dan Hicken and Frank Frangi haven't had one of these in a while. How are you doing, Hick? Ah, doing great. Thank you, Southeast Orthopedic Specialist, best in the business, se-ortho.com for all your orthopedic needs. Busy time of the year, a lot of torn labrums in baseball world for Doctors yes. to repair. Yes, there is, is the boys that the, the, the torn labrums and and Tommy John. Tommy John. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Dan, Dan, let's let, we got all of it to get to. We got a lot yeah. of sports, but we'll start with football. You're the okay. recruiting beat reporter. Okay. Uh, for the uh, podcast. All right. I you've always said step one is you got to get them on campus, right? And they've started to do that. Great we, job. We've all said that. A plus. The next thing is you got to close a few, mm-hmm. and that's been your thing. Yeah. Well, they've closed a few now. We got a couple, a couple. offensive linemen. Yeah. Do, you, do you like IMG where we are? Is yeah, big. The second IMG guy, Kamari Wilson. Last IMG year, is big. So, do you feel? How do you feel about the two? Better. Companies? Oh, I feel good about that. I I feel better. I wanted to keep. I want moment. I I want to drop one a week now. You know, okay. that's my. And look, Napier has done a great job. So, but I'm ready for the next guy. This right. was a couple weeks ago. I'm ready for the next big <laughs> signing. So, well, you know, hopefully we got a few more in the – I know we have a few more in the pipeline, but I, I want them to start, you yeah. know, because we got to build momentum, build right. momentum. And so, so far, so, you know, it was a slow – we got them on the – we got them. And that's first. The, yeah. They, they, yeah. Number one, they've got to – you got to – your party's got to become relevant yeah. again. Yeah, And I think that's happened, yes. right? Yes, The next thing is you got to start getting some. Beautiful I think facility, that's starting to happen. Beautiful facility opening up, a lot of good momentum going. You know, hear great things about, you know – uh, uh, the ladies who are working there, heading up recruiting. So a lot of good Katie things g- going on. Twenty twenty five quarterbacks coming in. So you know, very positive stuff. Um, I really, it's been a great off season. Uh, but we want to, we want to start to shore up yeah. the twenty twenty three class. Let me tell you the genius, the genius of Billy Napier is these black uniforms. Let me let me explain the genius. Of okay. It. I don't like the black uniform. I, a I lot, think, a lot don't. Yeah, yeah. I, I would. I like the traditional yeah. uniforms: the orange helmet, the blue shirt, right. the white pants, and and I wouldn't. Right. I wouldn't very much. But I, I'm an old guy. I'm a get yeah. off my lawn guy, I guess. But the players love the black uniform. Yes, not just all the players. Right, all the players and all the sports. Right, doesn't matter the sport. The, Vanderbilt wears them in baseball, right. and everyone wears them in basketball, and everybody loves the black uniform. Yeah. So Billy Napier, always being player centric and recruiting centric, mm-hmm. knows it's a good idea. Right. But rather than just say we're going to do it because the players want to do it, right? He said, "Let's make it matter." Yeah. So he turned it into which I love. Yeah, it's and good. he did this at Louisiana. Let's honor our military, right? Because everybody wants to do that, right? And the players still get to wear the, the sweet black uniforms. Right. The 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 people that care about the good things in the world, like our military, care about this too, and the players are among that group too. Mm-hmm. And then and then we auction them off to help people. The in, the, do it around Veterans Day, right? Every year, well, yeah. the, it'd be the the game closest to Veterans mm-hmm. Day. So the to me, the genius part of it is mm-hmm. he's doing what is something that is very helpful in recruiting, mm-hmm. but he's making it matter in a very good way. Yeah. What a great, what great a smart idea. guy, and you know? and a different look in the swamp in terms of he'll have yeah. a blackout around yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Night game with right. ninety thousand. That's right. In black, yeah. it'll be you know. Listen, but he made I, it matter. Yes, he's not not just let's appease the he recruits. Turned, uh, he was speaking at a club, and he yeah. turned the booze into cheers. Yeah, exactly. Right. So that's so a pretty I, good move. So, so, so it is. So I, so I think. Look, we still haven't seen him coach, mm-hmm. but nobody can debate that he is going to turn Florida into a destination for the good players. Yes, I don't think that. I of all the people you talk to in the media, at the school, mm-hmm. in the fan base, mm-hmm. uh, connected with the program, mm-hmm. I would say there's no debate that he comes in. Uh, everybody is very confident that what he has built, he will start getting more of the good players to the school. You agree with that? I do. Nobody I debates do. that. And I think he's going to, yeah, I'm excited about everything that's coming. We're looking forward to the season. But again, I, I, I just, again, it's a tough word for a Gator fan, patience. Right. Patience. And we all have to have it. And I fear that October, <laughs> that right. word may go out well, the window. How many, how many wins do you have? Uh, what do you have? I winning? mean, I'm a seven, seven, eight win team. I'd be happy. Yeah, you, you, you have, you have them winning seven or eight. Yeah. I, I think. I don't that's, know if I'd be happy. I mean, we're never happy. But I think that's who they Florida, are. But yeah. But I think, the, and and a lot of it, if there's eight and four, can manifest itself a bunch of different ways. Right. You can get off. Right. To, you can get off to a great start. Right. Collapse at the end, lose to Florida State, and the eight and four sucks. Correct. You can struggle a little bit and barely lose yeah. to LSU in Georgia. Yeah. Rally late, and the eight and four feels pretty good. That's a good point. So there's a couple different kinds of there's, there's a bunch of machinations of what eight and four could be. The former head coach, 
is joining a high school football team. Yeah. Sort of. As a consultant. Because yeah. he's living up there. And... Yeah. But, you know, but didn't he, I, I, someone told me he also bought a home in Jacksonville. There was some talk that his kids were at bowls. Yeah, but, and I, but things, I think, but... but someone else told me recently, yeah. and I don't know if it's true or yeah. not, I don't want to misrepresent right. it. But that he even even lately, yeah, that he's looking at a home in Jacksonville, maybe, and he's got the home in Greensboro, Georgia, which right. is near Reynolds Plantation, right, which is the Lake Oconee School. So I don't know, I don't know what's true and what's not about Dan Mullen. Well, I think I don't that, think he's coaching. I think what though. you've right, yeah. and I think what he wants to do is what you've talked about yeah. television. Yeah, yeah, he he really wants to be on TV. Yeah, he a lot of people think that's all he wants to do. Right, is just go be a TV guy right. and maybe coach down the road. But I um, he's good on TV. If, if he he would be a very good TV guy, he'd be a good. I I I can. The problem is there's not that many of those slots. No, but yeah, I yeah, there's plenty of slots. But are you willing to go do, you know, Mountain West football well, on, a, on a Saturday night? Yeah, no, I think I think what yeah. he, here's what I'm you're not getting, getting. I don't think you're getting. And again, you liked them on TV. I didn't see enough of them to form an opinion. And quite frankly, TV guys don't matter as much to me. But apparently, they matter. Like with the Drew Brees story yeah, and such. Right. But, right. Well, uh, yeah. Here's where I could see him. Mm-hmm. A perfect fit, the only with one glitch. That show that they do, the SEC Network does at night mm-hmm. with P, it had Peter Burns, mm-hmm. Chiswick, mm-hmm. Roman Harper, and Doring. Mm-hmm. Okay, well Chiswick's gone; he's coaching now. So ah. I, I could see Mullen being plugged into that, with one exception: is do you now have two Florida guys in there, uh, or if he look if he's looked at as the Mississippi State guy, right? Then you then I mean I think he'd be the perfect fit for that to sit next to Doring and. Listen, and I'll Roman give you another. Harper. Now they're but leaving, I, but I don't think they put two Florida guys in there. They're leaving CBS, so it won't matter. But I'd rather listen to him talk about SEC football than Rick Neuheisel. Uh, he'd fit that for too. example. He could fit you that know? too. You know, and and that's a, that's a perfect. Now I don't know that Neuheisel's leaving. Yeah. So I don't think they're going to no, fire. No, CBS a guy is leaving. Right, right, right. So but, but, it'll go over to ESPN. But, but that's the kind of that's where I see him. He looks yeah. the part. He looks good in a suit. Yeah. He's articulate. I could see him in a new Heisel Chiswick type role. He's not big enough to. He's not going to. He's not bumping any of the ESPN guys. Right. But I could certainly see him. And the other thing is, how will he do? do will he do games? I see him more as a studio guy yeah. than a game guy. Uh, but also, I don't know. Shout out Dan, though you are living your best life. Yeah. Yes, he is. <laughs> I'll say one. Thing. I told you this about Dan Mullen. Yeah. A lot of coaches once they get fired, they're invisible. Yeah. He wasn't. He's tweeting about vacation in Maine and on the beach, you know, and he he's a very happy guy. Matt Luke. Yes. Offensive line coach at Georgia, head coach at Ole Miss, just retired. Right. At 45. Yeah. And, and and the story I read was- I read it too. You did read it. Okay. Yeah, about wanting to be with his kids. Yeah. He's at the amusement park. Yeah. And he gets a call. on the recruiting phone. Yeah. Which you do at Georgia. Right. And you got to live it. Right. 24-7. Right. And his kid's like, dad, are you going to even spend yeah. time with me on my birthday? Yeah. And so, uh, and, and he said, yeah, no, I, I love the story. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's get from football to okay. basketball. Okay. You're the basketball guy. I'm the basketball re- I'm the beat reporter. I saw Patrick Young this week. Yeah. And I asked him his opinion. He's What do you think? He's on board. He's he, he's read a lot about the analytics and such. Yeah. And again, I don't I'm not gonna change my views on everything. Right. I'm gonna keep the same level of expectation. I I saw a uh, early uh, Joey Bucket brackets list right. that had Florida getting in as a nine, which tells me you're in the top 35, 36, right. 37. In the country, sort of. Yeah, I um. Well, here's what I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, number one, Mike White left. Right. Now that was uh, and right. Regardless of whose fault it was, he sure. left. Sure. So you got to hire somebody. Yeah. They went with a young, exciting, analytics-based, mm-hmm. charismatic coach. Mm-hmm. They did not go with someone from the region. Right. So, but as I look back, first of all, getting Castleton to stay was huge. Yeah. He got Will Richard from. Is it Richmond? I think he's a pretty good player. Is it Richmond? Uh, the Belmont kid? A uh, Belmont. Belmont right. kid, Richmond. Right. They, Will Richard from Belmont. Why mm-hmm. say Richard? Mm-hmm. Uh, from Belmont. Pretty good player. Mm-hmm. The, uh, kind of an assist right yeah. there from the non basketball yeah, guy. Well done. A little pass back. Then they got the bottom kid from VMI. Yeah. Who I think is going to be the backup point guard. Okay. But the good one they just got was the St. Bonaventure guy, Kyle Lofton, who's mm-hmm. going to be their starting point guard. Mm-hmm. Now, it's just like the is what he we, kin to Bob Lanier, do you know? I, I do not. <laughs> because if he is, I'm excited. If not, I, I don't know. But, it, but No, he's a good player. He's got 116 games he's yeah, played or correct. some incredible amount of games. And here's what I'll tell you. Yeah. What I learned last year is there's no way to judge this big group of transfers. Right. Last year I thought, wow, they got Fleming and this guy and that guy and they and they weren't very good. Right. So so you never know right. what, what you're getting. Fair. The uh but I do th- and he, and he, they want one more 610 guy. Have you seen this? Okay. There's a St. Bonaventure big guy and Is a Washington- he kin to Bob Lanier. 
<laughs> yeah, we don't know. The and late the was- great Bob Lear And the Washington passed. State big guy. Okay. And they're both 6'10", 230. Right. They're both kind of like Johnny Broom, probably not as good. Okay. And and definitely then, not as good, right? But yes. But so so I'd like to see what yeah. they become when they get another guy. Yeah. I, um, again, I let me tell you the one thing that stood out mm-hmm. about Richard Bonham, Lofton, the three the three transfers. Okay. And if they get the St. Bonaventure guy, and I'm still not sure if he's related to Bob. I won't ask again. But do you know what they all stood out to me? I, what? I, I'm a stat nut. Okay. All four, the mm-hmm. three that are coming, and mm-hmm. if they get this fourth guy from St. Bonaventure. Shot 82% or better from the line. Hallelujah. Doesn't it feel like Florida has missed free throws for about 30 years? Yes. Uh, other, than, other than Chris Chiozza uh-huh. and Igor yeah. and Canyon Barry, the underhanded guy, doesn't it feel like every, <laughs> didn't it feel like they've missed every other free throw they've done? Why do I feel that way? I don't know. Feels I don't like know that that's correct, but yeah. it's a nice try. Okay, so 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 yeah. But I, here's what here's I'm okay. With them. Just to keep it real, and it's maybe a little bit unfair, but yeah. Two of the three signings, right, yep. went elsewhere. Right. Right? We got one to Indiana, one to LSU. Right. Yeah. Those are the guys that we're going to need right. to become a great program again. I, I agree with right? that. Right? Yes. Okay. But I'll def- – Because I, we're I've, just – we're yeah. putting – we're just band-aiding right now with transfers. But isn't that what a new guy has to do? He has No to. matter where you are. It's Most not, likely. That, I mean, all new guys yeah. in the portal era, yeah. in the commit early era, yeah. the new guy's got a band-aid. You got a wow. No, no matter where you go – Yeah. The, and if the if a new coach, unless you're going to Kentucky, North Carolina, or Duke, yeah. or Kansas, if a new guy shows up mm-hmm. in April, yeah, he's he's got to start with portal guys. Yeah. Now you hope he starts getting the high school guys, but he's got to start with the portal guys. Yeah. I don't think you have any choice in that. So 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 we'll see. I I, I don't know if they'll be any good. One thing I learned last year: support Todd Golden. Go to the basketball games. Yeah, I agree with that. Right. But but one thing I learned last year, Dan, is there's no way to predict how the team of transfers will do. That's, That's what we point. learned last year. There's no way to predict. Because, you know, listen, what if – here's another one. The kid from Penn State who played for us last right. year, Myron Jones. Right. What if he rediscovers his stroke? We found out he had a busted hand and right. blah, blah, blah. What if he starts hitting 43% from threes again? Correct. And, you know, and, wow. Okay. And I saw Chris Harry, our friend Chris Harry, tweeted the other day mm-hmm. or, or retweeted something from C.J. Felder. Mm-hmm. C.J. Felder's telling people he's finally healthy. He's the new me. Now, I have no idea if he's any good. Right. But – it's, but one thing you know, a team full of transfers, you cannot – they may be lousy. Mm-hmm. They may be great. Baylor's were great. They won a national title. Florida's team full of transfers last year didn't even make the tournament. So there's no way of predicting what the team full of transfers will do. Right. But it's intriguing because I think I like the guy's energy. I've had him on. I told you that yep. on the radio show, sat with him, and he's a – I love his energy. I mm-hmm. like where he is. Here's the other thing. And, and, and Gator Twitter isn't going to like this. Okay. Mike White also went and got about five or six transfers at Georgia. Oh yeah, he did. How are they going to do? Yeah, I mean and he kept he kept his most important. And he kept guy. the best player. Yeah, and he got about four or five portal yeah. guys. And they looked a lot like the ones he got here. So again, yeah, and, maybe they're good, maybe they're not. And, and here's what could be damaging. And and again, he left, so it's not like he got fired. But and I say this to the people that didn't like him very right. much. Clearly, Florida was ahead of Georgia while Mike White was the Florida coach. No question. They've been ahead of Georgia with a lot of coaches. If Mike White becomes a Georgia coach, if Georgia suddenly becomes ahead of Florida, that's a bad thing. I don't think that's going to happen. Losing seasons don't happen around Gaines, no, Gainesville, no. even in college basketball. As much as I don't think the program right. is this, right? You know, it, they don't happen. Right. We've had one in the last twenty-five years, right. and that was by the greatest coach in Florida history in his last on year. his last year, yeah, right? right? So. You know what? What happens yeah. if that happens? Yeah, yeah. Mike White. Uh, never, what are going to be everybody's response then? Right, and I don't think that's going to happen. I don't either. But, uh, but I'm just saying. But, but for but Todd Golden, the last thing he needs, even in year one, I know, is for Georgia, yeah. who's never been better than Florida, right. to suddenly be better. If Florida, that's what if you, Florida has beaten Georgia some incredible <laughs> like right. nineteen of twenty three or something along so those lines. That that's yeah. a big. All right, so the, um, let's get to baseball. Okay. How do you feel about the baseball squad? I feel okay. I. It's easy. If to, they had swept Missouri, no, nah, I wouldn't feel no. Even and, then, because look at who they're playing. Yeah, let's okay, keep it I'm real saying, okay. here, right? I All mean, right. it's Missouri and Kentucky, and okay. they've played the big boys, right? Right. So, uh, you know, um, they haven't hit as well over the last few games. I, I, I'm, I'm happy and proud that they have stabilized, rallied back. 
They have four games left at the time we're taping this or live or they whatever. They play FSU, are. On, FSU Tuesday, three, South Carolina. Carolina. on Tuesday. Right. They they will be in a regional, right? Which is very important. They'll be and they'll be in the SEC tournament. They will not, and they'll be in the SEC tournament, which is also very important. Florida baseball should never. Florida baseball should have expectations. Right, I agree. And should never, ever not be in the SEC tournament. I agree. Right? Yep. So those points I feel good about. I feel good about the way they fought back. They lost their best pitcher. Some of the young guys have thrown pretty well, right? So we've gotten back on that. Um, So maybe Miami, maybe Southern Miss is where I'm seeing in the predictions. Southern Miss is the most recent one. Yeah. Yeah. I will tell you this. Yeah. If they had swept Missouri. Mm Mm-hmm. Or they would then be since since getting swept by Tennessee right. at home, right. losing that dagger of a game, the last one when right. they thought they had it won. Right, they would be ten and one since that game. It's good baseball. They're now nine and two. Yeah. They're nine and two it's since good getting swept by Tennessee. But but I think if they'd have swept Missouri, they'd have then since then they would have then had two out of three from Kentucky. Yep. Uh, sweep of Mississippi State on yep. the road. That was nice. Sweep of Missouri. Yep. And they would. Be, I think. As crazy as it sounds, that one loss to Missouri yeah. has people thinking, okay, they're doing better. If yeah. they had won that game, you think be, we'd be, I would have been speaking differently. I do. Okay. I, I think because I think people think they're the hottest team, one of the hottest teams going now. Yeah. Despite who you're playing, you should yeah. win the game. I know you got to play the guys on so, schedule. So having said that, by the time a lot of you listen to this, they will have played Florida State. Yeah. But that's an important game. Yeah. For where Florida is, yeah. you're jockeying now for you're not getting a regional. So you're going to somebody else's regional. You'd rather go to Southern Miss than Miami, but yes. you've had success against Miami yeah, too, but, though. But you'd rather go to Southern yeah. Miss. You'd rather when a Flo- when a state of Florida team, yeah. I don't care if it's FSU, when one of the three, yeah. FSU, Miami, or Florida State, I mean FSU, Miami, or Florida, when one of those three teams shows up in a regional in Texas or Louisiana or or Oklahoma, those teams worry. Yeah. Whether you like – those teams don't like seeing yeah. one of the Florida teams show up there. Miami – Miami's not afraid of Florida. Yeah. Okay, they're not. They, they, Florida might – Florida beat them early in the year. Right. Florida might beat them, but they're not afraid of them. I hear you. The Southern Misses of the world yeah. don't want to see Florida show up. That's fair. So that's what That's I mean. fair. But, again, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they made the tournaments, that they're going to make the tournaments. Uh, so that part we've sort of yeah. stabilized. And and we'll see going forward how they, how they continue to build and how Sully – Attacks yeah. this thing All right. because the Ryapel kid's been terrific. He's been, he, and he well, was a transfer, and we should have hit a couple more of those. Well, and that and because there's th- kids, I'm sure they line up. If yes, if, if Sully calls somebody and says, "I want you to come to Florida," of course, and they're in the transfer portal. Okay, one can yeah. I'll be there tomorrow. I think Sully would be the first to admit mm-hmm. he wasn't sure how to manage the portal. Yeah, he only got one guy. Yeah, he's using a lot of freshman pitchers. Yeah. Everybody else, and it many, hurts. You got to go through those growing pains. Many others are, and so right. now Florida's got a younger team than everybody right. else, and it's hard. I don't care what sport it is; it's hard to win with a younger yep. team than a veteran team. A couple so. guys lost their stroke a little bit too, and I know, I know, our guy Colby, yeah, Halter, you know, has really struggled, really struggled, and yeah. and, and and is hanging. They had a couple hits though against Missouri. I saw the yeah. other day, so hoping he can get that. Yeah, thing hit a home run of that series too. Yeah. So okay, one big thing as we wrap here. Yes. It's a, and I'm serious about this because okay. it's a podcast about the Gators, so we talk all about all Gator sports. Yes. It's a real important time in Florida athletics because so much has changed. Well, there's, yeah. a, there, there's a new football coach. Yeah. There's a new basketball coach. It's probably as new as it's ever. Ever? It's yeah. New football, new basketball, yeah. new women's basketball. Women's soccer just new, got hired. New, new soccer. Coach. Yeah. That's four coaches that have been hired yeah. in the last three, four months. Yeah. The baseball coach is having to learn how to manage a portal, mm-hmm. so his world's changing. Yeah. This, there's a brand new football facility yeah, coming. Yeah, this is Good a point. the baseball field is only two years old. Right. This is a really crucial time. Good point for Scott Strickland, who I, I'm a big fan of mm-hmm. his. Um, but this is a big, a very important time. It's almost a transition time for big picture Florida sports. Yeah, I would agree with that, and uh, and it'll be interesting over the next five years how this all unfolds. And again, with the NIL, that's a whole different topic. But yeah. Pandora's box is opened. Everything's coming out and. Yeah, you know, good luck. It's a different, different, different game now. Hugh and, Hathcock. Yes, I never thought MVP. Hugh Hathcock would be. You, a name we love. We you. talked about a lot on a podcast. Yeah, you go. You Hugh Hathcock has made the podcast. Thank you. You there, there is that. So, all yeah. right, uh, that's all things Gators. <laughs> all things orange and blue. Dan Hick and Frank Franz. Yeah, thank you, Southeast Orthopedic Specialist SC-Ortho.com for all your orthopedic needs in the Jacksonville area. Frank, have a great week. You too, Hick.